Hello guys, one of the common interview questions during DevOps interview is how to manage Terraform state file or where it is being managed, right? So that's a common interview question. So that's exactly what we are going to discuss in this particular video. So we all know about Terraform, right? Um, Terraform is going to create a file called terraform.tf state file if you are working on your infrastructure changes, right? Okay, so that is the file. It is going to keep all the information about the infrastructure. If you mess around with that file, that's it, right? So Terraform would not know how to manage the infrastructure, right? So, so think about a team environment, right? Where many DevOps engineers are, you know, working on um, the infrastructure changes, right? So how to manage the state file? So what we will have to do is we will have to store the state file in some remote place, okay? Such as uh, Amazon S3 bucket, or let's say if you're working on Azure, you can also store, um, you know, you can use Azure blob storage to store your Terraform uh, state file, or of course there are several options, okay? But this video we are going to focus on using Amazon S3 bucket, okay? But again, Let's say that you are storing uh, the Terraform state file in Amazon S3 bucket, but still, right, everyone can access uh, the S3 bucket, isn't it? So how we are going to solve the problem? What we are going to do is we are going to create a Dynamo DB table, okay? And we are going to uh, create a hash ID, right? So that any developer wants to work on it, he needs to occur the lock first before he can actually make the change, right? So that is how we are going to solve that problem. All right, so let's get started. So let's look at this particular diagram. This is exactly what we are going to do. Uh, we are going to write some Terraform script files, okay? And what we are going to do is we are going to uh, create Amazon S3 bucket. We are also going to create a DynamoDB table. That is where we are going to store the lock information, right? All right, so let's get started. So let's quickly review our pre-request. So if you see here, we need to have Terraform uh, installed and then we also need to have AWS CLI installed. And then we need to set up access key as well as secret key so that we can access AWS cloud. And that's what I actually have here, right? So this is my Ubuntu EC2 instance where I have installed Terraform as well as AWS CLI. And I also have set up my access key as well as my secret keys. Perfect. So if you look at the scripts, right? Uh, yes, we are going to create this variables.tf file where we are going to store um, variable information like region code and then instance type. And I'm going to create another uh, script called main.tf where we are going to uh, create actually two resources. One is for um, S3 bucket. And then we are also going to create this uh, Dynamo DB table where we are going to uh, you know, the store the lock information, right? Meaning developer needs to occur the lock first before he can actually make uh, changes, right? And then we are going to initialize apply. So this is going to do everything in the local uh, uh, Terraform state file. I mean, this is going to create a Terraform state file locally. And then what we are going to do, we are going to create a backend. We are going to create a Terraform backend. So this is a script which is going to create that uh, Terraform back and right this is where we are going to store uh, our files from local into remote right so this is going to actually um, store it in s3 bucket as you can see this is the reference for s3 bucket and then this is the reference for the dynamo db table right and then you know we need to initialize that so what this is going to do this is going to switch from local remote storage into sorry, local storage into remote storage, right? Okay, and then I also have a few scripts. Um, I mean, I have few steps to destroy as well, right? So you, if you want to destroy, you can also go ahead and then destroy whatever we have created, okay? Perfect. So let's get started. Let me go ahead and then create this folder. So, okay. So yes, so I don't have anything in it and I'm going to start creating my first uh, Terraform scripts. So let's go ahead and then do that. Uh, this is mainly for, you know, storing, uh, 
I mean, declaring my region code as well as the instance type. Perfect. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to create this particular file main.tf. So this is where we are going to create a S3 bucket as well as Dynamo DB table. Okay, and then let's copy these two block of code for creating S3 bucket as well as the Dynamo DB table, right? Okay, so this is going to create S3 bucket and that is the bucket name. Make sure this is unique, okay? We have enabled the versioning, right? So meaning uh, we want to actually see the full history, right? Uh, in, in our S3 bucket. So that's why I have enabled this option. And then this is for, you know, um, you know like encrypting, right? So we want to enable this uh, server-side encryption. So, so that's the script for that. And then this is going to create a Dynamo DB table. And then this is uh, more or like the primary key, right? So that's very important, right? So, so that's what it is, right? So that's pretty much over there. All right, so let's save this and then execute Terraform in it. So let's initialize, right? So what this is going to do, this is going to initialize everything, right? But you know, but think about this, right? We have not done any apply or anything like that, correct? So it just initialize that, right? Okay, so what we will do is, let's go ahead and then say Terraform apply. Okay, and then go ahead and then say yes. So what this is going to do, this is going to create a S3 bucket as well as uh, the Dynamo DB table in AWS. Okay, wow, see here, so it was able to create. And then if I type ls minus al, wow, see here, so this is the Terraform state file. Okay, so again, my Terraform state file is in my local machine, I mean, I mean in my EC2 instance, right? So this is as good as the local storage, right? Okay, but what is our goal? We want to actually store that state file into S3 bucket, right? So how to do that? What we need to do is we need to add this piece of code. So this is nothing but this is the one which is going to create the backend, right? So let's go ahead and then edit our script. Go to the end of the file and I'm going to add Okay, if you see here, yes, we are going to create a backend. And uh, if you see here, this is the bucket reference, right? Whatever the S3 bucket we have created. So that is the name we had given. And of course, you can verify that. And if you actually see, this is the Dynamo TB na uh, table name, right? And that's what, you know, we have given. So that's the same name. And if you actually go up, I will also show you what is the bucket name. You see here? So this is our S3 bucket name, right? Perfect, right? And then of course, um, we also mentioned our region. So that is over here, here. That is over here. Perfect. So let's go ahead and then, you know, save this file. So what we need to do is we need to initialize again. Why? Because right now it is in the local, uh, st uh, local storage, right? So let's go ahead and then say Terraform in it. Okay, see here, now what is it asking? So it is saying that, okay, so it actually found a new backend, which we have just added, right? So that's what it is actually asking. So do you want to go ahead and then uh, store? So yeah, so let's go ahead and then type yes. Wow, see here? So the Terraform has been, you know, successfully initialized. And now if you actually go and see your uh, Terraform state file, locally, you're not going to see anything. Wow, see here? So this is a zero, right? Zero byte. It means that, uh, you know, it, it has taken away from here and then it is actually stored in Amazon S3 bucket. So how do you know that? Let's actually go to uh, AWS console, go to S3 bucket. Okay. Wow, see here, so this is the bucket name, right? So click on this one. Yeah, click on this one, S3. Yeah, so see here, so this is our Terraform state file. And when you click on the versions, it is actually going to show the history of the changes, right? But we just, uh, you know, applied only once, right? So that is what, you know, it is actually showing here, right? So if you are making more changes, and if you say Terraform apply, you are going to see the versions being, you know, created here, right? So for every apply, it is going to come here and then update it, 
right? And then we can also go to DynamoDB here, and then we can also quickly check, uh, click on the tables. Wow, see here, this is the table it got created, right? And when you click on the item, so this is the lock ID, which we just created, right? Perfect, right? Awesome. So now, you know, we were able to do that. Okay, and then we also verified that our local stored, uh, state file has a zero byte. It is nothing but it's empty, right? So that's pretty much it, right? So that's how, guys, you know, that's how you would be able to uh, store uh, the Terraform state file in S3 bucket. Now, let's say that I want to clean this up, right? I want to clean this up. Okay, I want to perform destroy command. Again, it's not that straightforward since uh, we are storing the state file in S3 bucket, right, remotely. So what we will have to do is uh, we need to uh, do a couple of things, okay? It's kind of a two-step process. So let's go to main.tf and what we need to do is, so I'm going to comment it. Okay, so so basically either you can comment it and, or you can actually remove it, right? So you can also do this, this is like a multi-line comment in Terraform and then come out of it. So what you'll have to do, you need to perform Terraform in it, okay? Okay, see here, now we are switching from remote into local, right? So that is what it is actually asking. You see here, it is going to unconfigure the previously set S3 backend. So perform, uh, type yes. Perfect. So now if you go ahead and then type ls minus al, wow, can you all see here? So that's your Terraform state file, right? So let's quickly go ahead and then view that. Wow, see here? Now the, you know, the state file have been, you know, stored locally, right? And then what we can do, we can actually uh, go ahead and then perform destroy, right, if you want to. So go ahead and then say Terraform destroy. Now this is going to destroy everything, you know, what we have created, right? Let's go ahead and then type yes. So this is going to clean up the S3 bucket and then it is also going to uh, clean up the DynamoDB table as well, right? So go ahead and then type yes. Wow, see here, so everything has been cleaned up and of course we can verify that. So go into AWS console and then click on DynamoDB, right, see here, everything is actually gone and then go to S3 bucket. Wow, see here, so everything has been cleaned, right? Okay, so a couple of things guys, okay, before I sign off. If you actually see the way we are creating the S3 bucket here, right? See here? So we have mentioned force destroy equal to true. That is actually not recommended. Let's say that, you know, if someone is deleting the S3 bucket accidentally, right? So whatever we have stored, all the state information in S3 bucket, everything will be wiped out, right? So this is not a uh, recommended settings, okay? So you don't want to do that. Um, you can actually say force destroy equal to false. When you do that, what, what would happen is no one would be able to delete the S3 bucket, you know, through Terraform script, right? So, so you have, you'll have to find an alternative way of, you know, cleaning that up, okay? So just kind of letting you know, okay? Awesome, guys. So that's pretty much it. So, so that's how, you know, you can uh, store the Terraform state file in S3 bucket and that's how, you know, you would, uh, secure it. Awesome. Thank you for watching.